Hello, today I'll be talking about Sleeping Gods. This is a game I got from my board game geek Secret Santa this year. Um, so I've played it one time solo as three players. I think it does have a solo mode where you can just play all the crew members. I played it as if I was playing three uh, separate players. Um, so anyway, let's get started with how to set up. All right, now the first thing I'll say is that uh, if you're starting your first campaign, uh, there's a quick start guide that uh, kind of gives you an introduction um, to the characters and what's going on in the story and kind of gets you set up. But you can just um, do this setup portion here and it will get you to where you were at the end of the quick start guide basically. So the first thing you do is take this atlas, place it in the center of the table and uh, uh, move, turn it to page two. Again, this is for when you're first starting a campaign. Later, if you saved and you're starting over, of course, you won't follow these steps. This is just starting a brand new campaign. Anyway, turn it page to turn it to page two. You take the ship miniature and place it in the region that contains uh, number two there. So we'll place the ship region there or the ship in the region there. The regions are separated by these dotted lines, by the land spaces, by this spiral binding. So this is a different region than this region. And of course by the edges of the map. Next you place your shipboard near the atlas and it's two-sided. You'll want to use the side for the number of players. So this is for one or two players. This is for three or four players. I'll be setting up for a three-player game. It's similar, but there may be, uh, like some of these numbers, uh, will be a little bit different depending on what side you're using. So again, I'm going to be setting up for three players, so I'm going to use the three or four-player side. You then take this ship action figure and place it just somewhere on the shipboard. You take three coins, which are these tokens, and just place them here on the center of the board along with one grain token. And those are uh, items that you start with, so uh, items that are on the ship just go here on the ship board. You take the Captain Sophie tile and place her near the ship board. She's kind of a shared among, uh, crew member among all the other players. You then take the eight uh, remaining crew boards and uh, distribute them as evenly as possible amongst the players. In the quick start guide, it says that in a three-player game, which I'm setting up for, uh, two players will take three of the boards and one player will take two. If you're playing a four-player game, each player would get two. In a two-player game, each player would get four. And in a solo game, of course, a player would control all of them. But I'm setting up for three players. So two of my players will get three of the crew, and one of the players will get two of the crew. All right, so one of my players will get Gregory Little, Laurent Lapointe, Kasumi. Uh, another player will get uh, Rafael uh, Vieira, Marco Reyes and Audrey Williams and then this player over here that just gets two characters will get Mac Mara Johnson and Kanan Sharma anyway so I've distributed them two three and three and again those would go in front of the uh, players of course I'm playing solo so they're just all right here in front of me there's a synergy token for each player or for each crew member uh, you just place them somewhere uh, nearby right now. You then take your ability deck, shuffle it up. Um, the rules say place it near the shipboard. Just It's easier for me the way I've got it set up to place them right here. Next you decide with whatever method you want to, who's going to be your first player and give them this captain token. I'll let this player that has these three uh, crew members be the captain or the first player. So I'll give 
them the captain token. Next you'll take the deck of cards with this back, that's your market deck, shuffle it and just place it somewhere nearby. Next you'll find your event cards and separate them by the different backs they have. This is the mild, perilous, and deadly. You'll shuffle each pirate pile separately and then first you'll draw uh, six cards from the deadly. Then place them on the bottom then you'll take six cards from the perilous place them on top of those and finally six cards from the mild deck and place them on top forming a deck of 18 cards so let me get that done after you have that event deck built you'll take those cards place them here on the shipboard where it says events and the rest of the event cards you can just place back in the box you then find your starting adventure cards um, in the market deck. So the, the other adventure cards have a different back, which I'll show you here uh, shortly. But the starting adventure cards can be found in your market deck, and they have the same back as the market deck. And they are Gloria, Soup, Gear, and Flapjacks. And you'll see that they say starting on them. And you'll just place those somewhere near the shipboard. Here are the normal adventure cards, which I said do have a different back than those starting adventure cards. And they're in numerical order, as well as the quest deck, which is quite large. Uh, so you'll want to keep it in numerical order. You know, one, two, three. You'll place them in this a magnetic box that has a lid so let me get that done so here are my quest cards inside the box here are my adventure cards and then you can just close it up and keep that somewhere nearby you also have a deck of enemy cards that are in numerical order you'll just place that uh, somewhere nearby Again, the enemy cards, uh, quest cards, adventure cards, you don't want to look at those, look through them. You always want to keep those secret unless you're told to find one. And when you do, you always keep them face down except for the one that you're told to find. And that's the same, again, for the enemy cards, uh, quest and adventure cards. You have this storybook that you'll need that uh, has your... Um, different story elements in that. You'll want to place that somewhere nearby. I don't really have any room right here on this table, so I keep it uh, close by. Next you'll take these search tokens, shuffle them up, and then create a stack of them and just place them somewhere near the ship board. You'll make a, pl <laughs> you'll make a supply nearby of your command tokens, damage tokens, coins, um, fatigue tokens, uh, these are coins as well. There's nothing in the uh, rule book that says what the values of the coins are, but I did read uh, somewhere on Board Game Geek that they are ones and fives. Uh, you got status tokens, Resource tokens, materials, meat, vegetables, grain, artifacts. These are your ship damage tokens. You'll just place them somewhere near the shipboard. Combat action tokens. You'll just place them somewhere nearby. And then just various explore tokens and various other tokens that may or may not come into play. Just set them somewhere near the board. You'll give each player one command and one ability card. Again, that's for each player, not for each crew member. So I'm playing a three-player game. So each player will get one command and one ability card. These cards, they look kind of like the 
ability cards, but they have a different icon on the back. Those are the level cards for leveling up your crew. You just place them somewhere near the shipboard. You can just place this port tile somewhere near the atlas. It just kind of tells you what actions you can do in a port. Next you'll take one of these journey log sheets. You will mark if you're playing in normal or brutal mode. You'll write the names of the players and the date that you started your campaign. And that is it. Once you have that done, you have completed setup. And you are ready to start playing Sleeping Gods. Alright, so how do we play the game? Well, starting with the first player, um, they'll take their turn and then you take turns in clockwise order. So the first thing a player can do on their turn is a ship action. So they'll take, the, take this ship uh, action figure and place it on one of the ship actions. So the different ship actions you have are deck, sick bay, galley, quarters, and bridge. You'll see there's also the hull here, but there's no action there. That's just a place that uh, damage can be taken. So let's start with the deck action. So if a player places their figure on the deck action, they will gain this specified number of command tokens. So three command tokens. So they would take three of these command tokens. Where did I just drop one? And put them in their play area. Then they could draw search tokens, which are these ones, and you can draw um, up to three search tokens. However, if any of the search tokens show a damaged um, icon on them, the ship will have to take damage. So, um, And if you draw three search tokens, um, as I mentioned, any that have damage icons on them, you may have to take damage to the ship. And you can only take the rewards from one token. So let's just look at one. So this one would cause two damage to the ship and give you one coin. Now, uh, if you wanted, if you thought maybe you want to try to get something better, you can draw another one. But again, you have to take the damage for each one you draw, and you only get the rewards from one of the search tokens. And they can give you things like meat or vegetables or coins or what have you. After you've uh, um, drawn your search tokens, you just discard them to the side. Whenever the search uh, token pile runs out, you'll shuffle the used ones and create a new search token pile. So again, you uh, can draw from one to three of them and you'll have to take damage from any of them, but you only get the rewards from one, and you get the command token shown here. Now you can do these in any order, so you could do the search first and then the command tokens, or the command tokens and then the search. So with any of these ship actions, you can resolve them in any order you wish. All right, if a player chooses the sick bay action, ship action, they get to draw one ability card, so they could draw one ability card into their hand. Now you can only have a maximum of three ability cards in hand, so if you ever would draw a fourth one, you would have to discard one. Then you get to take a number of command tokens here. Because there's a slash, you get a number of command tokens depending on the number of players. So you look here in a three-player game, you would get to take four command tokens if you came here. In a four-player game, you would get to take five command tokens. On the flip side, it would be different for one and two players. All right, so if the sick bay, you get to draw one ability card. You get to take a number of command tokens depending on the number of players. And you get to recover one health from one of your crew members. And I believe that's to any crew member, um, not just one of the crew members you control. I think it's to any of the crew members you can recover one health. And that, as as uh, crew take damage, you know they'll they'll put damage tokens on their board. And so if you recover a health, you just remove one damage token. 
this is their maximum damage before they are unconscious or um, whatever um, where they can't participate in challenges or combat anymore which we'll talk about those later all right um, the next uh, possible ship action space you can take is the galley now I should mention that you can never um, take the same um, ship action twice in a row so if a previous player had moved the ship action uh, token to sick bay and then on your turn you have to move it you can't leave it at sick bay and take that sh same ship action you have to move it to one of the other locations so let's uh, look at the galley that one lets you draw two ability cards at least on a three or four player side that i think that's less on the uh, on the one or two player side um, anyway, some of these numbers may change on the one or two player side. You get to uh, draw three command tokens and then you can discard one ability card to remove one fatigue from a crew member. And just like the recovering one health, um, I believe you can remove that one fatigue from any crew member, not just one of the crew members you control. And we'll talk more about what fatigue, um, damage, and what these command tokens are for here shortly. Let's move on to the next possible ship action you can take is the quarters where you'll get to draw one ability card. You'll take a number of command tokens depending on the number of players. Again you look up here so in a three player game you would take four command tokens. Um, then you get to remove up to three command tokens from adventure cards or player boards or crew member boards even those um, controlled by other players and we'll talk uh, about how those command tokens get placed on adventure cards and uh, crew member boards here in a bit and finally we have the bridge where you'll get to draw one ability card take a number of command tokens depending on the number of players and you can remove all command tokens that are on uh, adventure cards or uh, crew boards. All right, so I think that covers all the possible ship actions. So again, the first thing a player does on their turn is choose and take one ship action. The next thing they'll do is uh, draw the top event card and reveal it and resolve it. Event cards might have a choice or a challenge or something like that. We'll draw the top one here and look at it. Um, so this one, Hidden Supplies. While reorganizing a hidden crate of food falls on Raphael. Gain one grain, but Raphael loses one health. So you take one grain token and place it on the shipboard. That's collective resources. Um, for all the players and then Raphael would have to get a uh, damage token placed on him because he lost one health but other and then you would just uh, set this aside uh, this event card aside because there are events that happen when you go through the event deck when you get to the last card in the event deck and we'll talk about that later all right, so then after a player has drawn an event card and resolved it, the last thing that a player can do on their turn is take two actions. The possible actions are to travel, explore, visit a market, or a port. So let's start with the travel action. Well, before I do that, I will say uh, you, you get to take two actions, and you can take the same action twice or two different actions, or you can skip uh, taking an action um, to get a command token or you can skip taking both actions to get two command tokens um, but let's talk about the first possible action travel when you travel you're actually performing a craft challenge we haven't talked about challenges yet but um, the travel is is kind of a craft challenge you can see that's one of the skills there that's the craft skill um, so when you travel, you can choose the player who's traveling can choose one of their uh, players 
one of their crew members to uh, participate, only one in in traveling. Now in other challenge in other challenges you can use more than one of your crew members to participate. But in the uh, travel action you can only choose one. They would have to have the craft skill, um, which only for player one here, only Laurent Lapointe has one. If you do decide to use one of your crew members to participate um, in this craft challenge, you would have to put a fatigue token on them, um, and then you would get to use uh, the number of craft skill icons they have. In this case, he just has one. Or if you choose, you don't have to choose to have a crew member participate. Um, but the next thing you do is draw an ability card and look at the fate number, so five. Now, if if I had used Laurent Lapointe, then I would add his one craft uh, uh, skill there. So I would have a total of six. Then you look at this chart here, and you see how many regions you can move. So if your total is zero to three, you can move one region. If your total is four to six, like uh, what we have here, we got the five. Um, I didn't end up using him, but if I had put a fatigue token to use him, I would have had a six, so that still would have put me in the same range where I could have moved two regions. If you had seven to eight, you could move three regions, and if you had nine plus, you could move four regions. So in this case, I got four to six, so I can move two regions. Now that's moving your ship. So as I mentioned earlier in the setup section, the regions are separated by these dotted lines, by the land sections, and by the spiral notebook, so or spiral binding here. So if I wanted to move two regions, I could move here and then here, or I could move up here and then up here. And you can move up to two regions. You don't have to move two regions. Now, if you move into one of these regions, like if I moved one, two, into one of these regions that has uh, one of these icons on it. Those are hazards and you have to complete uh, that hazard challenge successfully when you moved in there. Even if you were going to move two, um, like if I was here and I was going to move two, I was going to go one, two. As soon as you move in there, you have to face the challenge or similar here if I was going to move one, two. As soon as you move into the space, you have to stop and face the challenge. So here you would face a strength challenge. Um, you'd have to get a total of five or higher. If not, the ship takes one damage. Uh, here you would face a cunning cha challenge. That's the cunning skill icon. And if you fail that, uh, one of your crew members takes a low morale. And I'll talk more about challenges here in just a second. We did kind of see how a challenge works a little bit when we were talking about our travel action um, but I did just want to mention if you move into a space like that you have to face that challenge or take the negative effect if you pass the challenge you just don't take the negative effect now one other thing you can sail like if you were going to move two here one and you wanted to move this way then you would look and see what page to turn to in the atlas so here you would turn to page eight and then you come in on the opposite side. So here I've turned to page 8 and I would come in up here. Now if there's more than one possible region on the side that you're coming in on, you can choose which of those regions that you uh, place your ship. So if I was here and sailed off this side, then I would turn to page 13 and I would come in on that side of the map. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. That's the travel action. Again, you do a craft challenge to see how far you can travel. And then, and again, you don't have to use a crew member. You can just draw the ability card and see what number you get, uh, what fate number you get, and use that. Or you can use one of your crew members to add their craft ability to add to your ability score. All right, um, let's talk about the explore action. So when you do an explore action, you can choose one of the areas with a red circle um, in the, that's in the region that your ship is in, 
and you can choose to explore that area or location and you do that say you choose to explore two then you take your storybook you open it to section two and read that and you'll face a you'll read what it says you'll face a challenge or a combat and do what it says and gain rewards or suffer suffer negative effects if you uh, fail the challenge or um, get you know beat up in combat or whatever and eventually it will then say return to the ship and now I don't want to show exactly what it says there because I don't want to have too many spoilers um, probably when I go over the uh, the when I do some sample turns um, maybe I'll just make up something for that instead of showing what's actually in the book because again I don't want to do spoilers so I guess this would probably be a good time to talk about uh, challenges more in depth about challenges and combat because when you're exploring locations that's when you're most likely to face a challenge or a combat so I think the best way to go about talking about challenges to show the challenge that's in the quick start guide so you may so if you turn to a section in the rule book like it said like if you explored two and you turn to section two in the rule book and it might say like this you awaken in cold dirt most of your crew lie next to you bound with the same crude rope that bites at your wrists and ankles <clears throat> your body catches or your body aches and your clothes drip with dew but there are no guards in sight and there are no shops sharp rocks nearby and there are sharp rocks nearby i better stop trying to read fast um, so you're presented with a challenge here. You can cut the rope bindings on nearby rocks and then you have to do a, a cunning challenge or you can rig, try to wriggle free of the rope bindings and do a strength challenge. So here you're, you have a choice. You take either a cunning challenge or a strength challenge. So the number here is the score you have to get. Uh, cunning, uh, you need to get a five or better. Or a strength or if you do the strength one you need to get a five or better so it probably de depends which one you choose will probably depend on what uh, crew you have so if player one was doing this he's got two crew members with strength uh, skill icons and only one crew member with a cunning screw uh, uh, skill icon so he would probably be more likely to try to do the strength challenge because he'll know he'll have at least a total of two if he uses those crew members now um, as I mentioned earlier if you if you are going to have a crew member participate in a challenge you have to put a fatigue token on them if a crew member already has a fatigue token token on them from per, per, participating in a previous challenge you can put a second uh, fatigue token on them but it goes uh, face up like this in which case it means for one thing they cannot have more than two fatigue tokens so as long as they have two fatigue tokens they couldn't participate in any future challenges and if they're in a combat they do minus one damage as long as they have two fatigue tokens so to have a crew member participate in a challenge you must put a fatigue token on them and then they can use whatever skill icons that they have. Um, so in this case, if we were going to try to do the strength challenge, wriggle free of the ropes and try to get a strength of five, we would put a fatigue token on each of these crew members so I can use their strength. Now, uh, Kasumi does not have a strength, so I couldn't use hers. I think I did mention earlier that any player can use Captain uh, Sophie Odessa here as part of their crew. So we could put a fatigue token on Captain Sophie there and also use her strength, giving us a total of three uh, strength so far. Now another player can use some of their command token, I mean, some of their um, crew to have them 
participate in the challenge if they want to, but if they do that, they have to pay one command, and they would just return that command to the supply, and then they could use any of their uh, crew members to also participate in the challenge, but they do have to fatigue any of the crew members that they would use to participate in the challenge. In this case, I don't think we would need to do that because we've already got a total of three um, just from using Captain Sophie, Laurent, and Gregory. So after you total up the uh, skill of all participating crew members, in this case it's three from these two and her, then you draw a fate card, look at the fate number, and add that to your total. So four plus three is seven. That easily passes our required number of five. So we don't have to do this portion in in, in um, italics. So if we had failed, if we had got less than five, we would have to take minus three health because the ropes uh, rips our skin. The rope rips your skin as you tear it off. But then we would still get to turn to section A.1. or A .1. So whether we passed or failed that, we would still get to turn to section A.1. But if we failed, we would have to get minus three health. And that minus three health has to go first to crew members that participated in the challenge. So if we had failed it, maybe we would put one, one uh, damage token on Gregory, one on Laurent, and one on Sophie, since they all participated in the challenge. You know, some challenges, it may be if you fail, you turn to a different section than if you succeed. And, of course, that would be here in italics or whatever that would say you know turn to section 8.2 maybe if you failed uh, otherwise if you succeed then you go to 8.1 well let's go back to um, after we drew our fake card say we had only gotten a one so we had uh, a total of three from our strength from Sophie Gregory and limit or I mean and Laurent and we had drawn a fake card and say it was only a one instead of a four. So our total was only four instead of five. Um, so we hadn't been successful yet. Well, there's still other things you can do. You can use crew abilities. So each crew member has abilities that you actually have to pay command to use. Um, we'll talk more about some of these later. Gregory's wouldn't have been helpful there. They're for removing status or improving your accuracy in combat. Lorentz crew abilities are just to get meat or improve accuracy. Kasumi's, we could have used hers. So if we had gotten a one um, and we didn't have enough, she has a crew ability that you can pay one command, which when you use a crew ability, you put the command token on their crew board, and then you get to use that ability. So this ability is if you got a one, you get to redraw a fate card. So she could have used that ability, spent the one command token we had, put it on our crew board, and then we would have got to redraw the fate card if we had gotten a one. Now one thing about crew abilities is once you've placed command on a, on a uh, crew board, you can no longer use any of those crew abilities until that command has been removed. And we saw earlier as for ship actions, you can remove command from uh, adventure cards and, and crew boards by using the bridge or the quarters. This lets you remove three command tokens from uh, adventure cards or crew boards, and this lets you remove all command tokens from adventure cards or crew boards. So again, once you've placed command on a crew board to use uh, one of the uh, crew abilities, um, you cannot use any more of those crew abilities until that command has been removed. So anyway, that's one of the things we could have done to try to uh, help us pass the challenge is you can use crew abilities. And all the crew have different abilities. I'm not going to go over them all now. Um, but if that wasn't helpful, you can also spend command to use adventure cards. So this one, you, some, uh, any player, it doesn't have to be the current you know, active player, any player could spend one of their command to uh, 
place on this uh, gear adventure card and that lets you redraw any fate card so if we hadn't gotten enough um, it, maybe we drew a one and Kasumi um, didn't have a command token to place on her board maybe this player spends his command here to let you redraw uh, uh, any fate card again once you place a command token on an adventure card then that adventure card is used and cannot be used again until uh, an action is taken to remove the command tokens from that adventure card another thing that can be done to alter the outcome in a challenge is uh, if after drawing the uh, ability card you didn't get the total you need players can discard cards in hand that have the icon um, for the challenge that you're doing to add to the um, score so this player has this ability card that has a strength icon on it they could discard this card to add one strength to the total so any of the players could do that. It has to be a card in hand. These cards would be in their hand, not an equipped uh, ability card, which we haven't talked about that, but I should probably go ahead and talk about that now. So I've already mentioned that um, command tokens can be used uh, to spend on crew boards to use an ability on the board. They can be spent on adventure cards to activate an adventure. I mean activate an ability on advent an adventure card. So command tokens can be spent pretty much at any time even on another player's turn. Um, but there's some there's sometimes they cannot be spent during uh, combat or during a during a challenge and one of those things you can spend command tokens at any time to equip an ability card so this one if this player had two command tokens they could spend those just putting them into the supply to equip this card to any one of their any one of their crew members or actually any player's crew crew member and you do that by just sliding it. You see there's two sections here where an equipped ability card can go. And what that does is give you another skill. So now he has one strength, one savvy, and one perception skill. And he also has this uh, ability. He can discard uh, this equipped card to remove a low morale status so if some player had a low morale status he could uh, discard that to remove that token so when you're doing a challenge um, if you have equipped ability cards that contribute to the icon that's uh, necessary for the challenge you're doing you get to count those icons to your total if you use that crew member um, so if this had been a strength, say Gregory had equipped this card previously, when we used him uh, to try to pass the challenge, if he had this card equipped already, he would add two strength to his, his total, and then this guy would have added one. But if you're in the middle of a challenge, doing a challenge, you can't spend command to try to equip it at that point. You have to have already had it equipped. To use it in a challenge but as I mentioned um, players can if they have an ability card in hand after the ability card the fate card is drawn to see the fate number if you haven't met the required um, skill uh, count to pass the challenge players can uh, discard cards from their hand that have the required skill icon to add to the total So that's how challenges work. Um, and again, uh, if you participate in a challenge, you got to put a, a fatigue token on you. Uh, if you get a second fatigue, if you participate in another challenge later, 
you have to put a second fatigue token. That's the most you can have, as I mentioned, so you can't participate in any further challenges until um, you get fatigue tokens removed. And that can be done either by using the galley, which lets you remove one fatigue token, or some of these other adventure cards, like this one, if a player, and again, any player can do this at any time, place an adventure token, I mean a command token on there, um, and then if you have three grain on the ship, you can spend three grain to remove three fatigue, and also restore three health to any uh, crew member. And you can remove the fatigue from one crew member or different crew members and you can restore the health from one crew member or spread it amongst different crew members. Alright, another thing that might happen when you explore a location besides a challenge is it might say combat. And so to cover combat I'll kind of uh, again use what's in the quick start guide. So say something tells you to turn to section 8.1 or A.1 then you read this you crack open a crude lock with a rock as soon as you break her out you hear a sudden snarl behind you two bullheaded monsters emerge from the woods and charge. Combat 1 and 2. Well 1 and 2 is the enemy cards that you'll need to draw. So there's number one and number two this where it says turn to a point two that's what you'll do after the combat is complete so you'll get the enemy cards um, shuffle them up without looking at them and then you'll place them side by side so, say you place them down like this, you got a Mythian Guard and Mythian Brute. And again, for this example, I'm just going to follow what's in the Quick Start Guide. Next, you'll get the Combat Action Tokens. In a three-player game, the current player will get two of the Combat Action Tokens, and the other two players will each get one of the Combat Action Tokens. If you were playing a four player game, each player would get one combat action token. If you were playing a two uh, player game, each player would get uh, two uh, combat action tokens and so forth. So anyway, you split up the combat, combat action tokens um, as I mentioned. Then you give each player their synergy, each crew member gets their synergy token. Alright, so I've given each crew member their own synergy token those don't do any good for the actual crew member themselves but we'll see how they're used here in a minute so combat is broken up into a combat round where first you'll have a attack and counter attack step then you'll have the end of round step then you check for victory um, if, uh, if all the crew members are not defeated or if the, all the enemies are not defeated then you start a new combat round. So first we'll start with the uh, attack and counter attack. So the players can attack and use their combat action uh, token in any order. Um, so the players can decide how, how they want to go about attacking. So we'll say uh, in this case that uh, this player wants Kasumi to attack first, so you place a combat action token on Kasumi. She currently has one weapon, the Wakazashi. Wakazashi. Um, you can get other weapons uh, later in the game through buying them at the at a market or through finding them through uh, encounters. Um, you know, when you're exploring, if you get additional weapons, they can be equipped. Uh, there'll be cards that you can place uh, underneath your current weapon here, but you can only attack with one weapon at a time. But in this case, we're using Kasumi's Wakazashi because that's all she has. And then you determine which, uh, you say which of the enemies you're attacking. We'll say she's attacking the Myth and Guard. 
which has a defense of five. So she has an accuracy of two with her Wakazashi. So the next thing she'll do is draw an ability card and look at a fate number. This time it's a three. You add that to your accuracy, which is a total of five, which equals the defense. So because it's equal to or greater than the defense, then she um, hits the myth and guard. If it was less than, if her total was less than the defense on the myth and guard, she would have missed. Since she did hit, she does three damage, so she gets to place three damage on the myth and guard. Now, this icon, if she had an equipped ability card that had the cunning symbol, she could discard that to add an additional damage, but she doesn't, so she just does three damage. So she takes three damage tokens, which she'll place on the myth and guard here. Now, uh, when you place the damage, you can start on any square, but any additional damage you place has to be placed adjacent when you place and not uh, diagonal. And you can even uh, start and then place additional damage onto an adjacent card, but the majority of the damage has to be placed on the uh, enemy you targeted. To defeat an enemy, you have to cover all the hearts that are on that enemy's card. So we'll say she's going to place one damage on the uh, Myth and Guard's head that reduces its health by one. Each square that has one of these uh, like damage icons on it, that's an extra damage that the enemy will do to you when it attacks or counterattacks. So if you cover those, you negate that. So uh, maybe she wants to put the next heart on that square to negate that extra damage. And it also reduces its health by one since it's a heart there. And now we can place this next damage over here on the Myth and Brute since it's adjacent to where we placed the last damage and we've placed the majority on the Myth and Guard. So this is a good way to place damage on an enemy that is harder to hit. This one has a defense of six. So using splash damage is a good way to place damage uh, on an enemy that's harder to hit. So now she's placed all three of her damage. She also placed this damage here, which, got, which has the Synergy token symbol. So now she can share her uh, Synergy token uh, by giving it to any other crew member. So we'll say uh, she's going to give it to Mac. Now, when you have somebody else's Synergy token, you can use that for its benefit, which this one lets you do one extra damage. Again, your own synergy token doesn't do you any good. So um, whenever you cover a square with a synergy symbol, you give your synergy token to another player and another crew member, and they can use that. But not until they are taking an action of some sort. Or in this case, at least for this one, when she attacks, she'll be able to get one extra damage. But now the targeted enemy counterattacks. Now, an enemy that had splash damage doesn't get to counterattack, only the targeted enemy. So this enemy does three damage, plus it would do extra for any uncovered uh, icons like this, but its one is covered there, so it does three damage. So it attacks the player that uh, attacked it, or it damages the player that attacked it, so Kasumi's got to take three damage. She's got a possible health of five, so she's still okay. If she had killed the myth and guard, if she had damaged all four of its uh, locations with a heart, then it would be dead and it would not get to counterattack. All right, so that was Kasumi's attack. So now uh, maybe Mac wants to attack. So this player, um, the controlling Mac and Kanan, would take his combat action cube 
and put it on Mac and now she's going to attack so she declares her target. We'll say she's going to target the Myth and Brute which has a defense of 6. Alright, she's got a Saber. I did forget to mention that this symbol is a block symbol. When the enemy counterattacks, if you have any block, you get to reduce the amount of damage you're taking by your block. Her block is zero, so she didn't get to block any of the Myth and Guard's counterattack. However, if Laurent had been attacking, he's got a block of two, so he would have got to block two of the counterattack. All right, so I just wanted to mention that. Back over here to Mac, who's attacking the Myth and Brute with her saber. She has an accuracy of four. Uh, the Myth and Brute has a defense of 6, so she's going to draw an ability card. Look at the fate number. She's got a 3, so with her accuracy of 4 plus 3 is 7, which is enough to hit the Myth and Brute, whose defense is 6. So she hits, so she does 2 damage, plus she's going to use Kasumi's Synergy Token to add 1. She'll now give that back to Kasumi, but now she's doing 3 damage. 2 plus the synergy token, so a total of 3 damage. So she'll place one of the damage on the head, one on the body, and one on the legs. And that's going to cover all the heart tokens on the myth and brute, so it's going to be defeated. Uh, also, she placed uh, one of her tokens on a square with a synergy icon. So Mac will get to use give her synergy token to somebody, so we'll have her give it to Captain Odessa. And because the Myth and Brute was defeated, it does not get to counterattack. Alright, two of our players still have combat action tokens. So We'll say that this player spends uh, their combat action token to use Captain Odessa. Alright, so Captain Odessa uh, attacks with a rifle. She has a accuracy of 1. She has max uh, synergy token, which adds 2 to her accu accuracy. So if she spends that, give, that gives her an accuracy of 3. Um, she draws a card and gets a 1. So even with max token, 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. That's not enough. So she misses the myth and guard because she needed at least a 5 or better. Because she misses, the myth and guard gets to attack first and does 3 damage. Um, doesn't get its extra damage because it's covered. But Sophie does have one block, so she takes two damage. So two damage tokens get placed on Captain Sophie there. But now even when you miss, you still get to deal one damage. So, uh, but when you miss, the enemy counterattacks first, and then you get to place your one damage. So now she does get to place one damage um, on the Myth and Guard. She will place it on the Myth and God, Guard's mouth, which has a synergy icon, so she gets to give her synergy token to any other player. The only player left with a combat uh, action token is uh, the, the player one here, so maybe she'll give that to Gregory Little. So now he'll use his last combat action token to attack. He's got an accuracy of 2 with his knife. He draws, he got a 4, so 4 uh, plus 2 is 6. That's enough because he only needed a 5, so he does 2 damage, which is going to place the last damage token on this Myth and Guard. So they will defeat the, the uh, enemies there and just place them back in the enemy stack in order. So one, two. Now, if they had not defeated the enemies, they used their last combat action token and uh, did not defeat the enemies. They, all the enemies still had some health, or at least one of them. Then the enemies then get to attack. 
So any surviving enemies uh, going from left to right, each of the enemies will get to attack. The active player decides which uh, crew member is being attacked and you cannot use block. You cannot use block when the enemies are attacking, or at least not a crew member block. Now, if you have a adventure card that's got block on it, um, you can use that. But a crew member's weapon block cannot be used when the enemies are attacking, only when they're counter-attacking after you've attacked them. Um, as I said, the active player determines which crew member that each enemy is attacking. Um, if all the damage done from that attacking enemy must go to one crew member, however, if they re leave their <laughs> reach their maximum health, so they're defeated basically, and there's still remaining damage uh, to be done, then the active player chooses another crew member that that remaining damage goes to. Some enemies, like this flying eye, may have an icon on them with the hourglass, which means an end of round ability. So at the end of round, when the enemies are attacking uh, the crew members, also that activates any of their uncovered end of round abilities, which this one would place a status, a madness status token. Again, the active player would decide which crew member gets that. And that one, as you can see, during a challenge, if you participate in a challenge, you get minus one health. So again, any uncovered end of round abilities that are on an enemy card, um, um, that an enemy that was not defeated that's attacking at the end of round, uh, it will trigger any of their end of round abilities, which could put status tokens on crew members, which the active player will decide which crew member get those. A crew member can have multiple status tokens on them, but they cannot have more than one of the same status token on them. I'll just say, um, so if at the end of the round, after the enemies attack, um, then you'll reclaim your combat action tokens again. Each player will get their combat action tokens again. Where did I do? I'm missing one. And start a new round of combat, again deciding which player, which in it, which crew member is going to attack first. So combat rounds will continue until either all the enemies are defeated or all the crew members are reduced to zero health. When a crew member is reduced to zero health, they can no longer participate in combat or uh, challenges until they recover at least one health. Once combat's over, then you can just collect all the combat action tokens and all the synergy tokens and just place them back to the side. All right, well, all that was to talk about explore actions. So I'll uh, reiterate with an explore action, you can choose one of the red circled uh, locations in the region your ship is in and then you turn to the storybook um, for that location and read what it says and you'll have some choice, some challenge or combat that you'll encounter. All right, the other type of action you can do is a market action. If you are in a region that has a market symbol like this one or this one, if your ship is in that region, you can do a market action. When you take a market action, you draw seven cards from the market deck and you can look at them and purchase any that you can afford or want. So they're costless down here. So like this one costs 10 coins <laughs> right now. They've only got three, so they wouldn't be able to purchase this. But you draw seven. Any that you want to purchase, you pay the cost. Um, any that you don't end up purchasing, you just place at the bottom of the market deck. If you purchase a weapon like that one we saw, you can place it equip it to any crew member and of course uh, crew members can uh, you can equip weapons to different crew members at any time as long as it's outside of combat once combat's begun then you can't uh, change weapons or equip weapons to crew members 
if you purchase another type of uh, market card it's just an adventure card so you put it you set it up here with your other adventure cards and that can be used uh, by any of the players at any time by playing the appropriate command if they have the required resources to do it all right the final type of action you can do is a port action if you're in a region with a port like here has this symbol in this region the Sakura trading port or post um, you can take a port action there because there is a port symbol if you do a port action you can do any of the uh, available choices on this port tile one time um, you can do all of them or just some of them but you can only do them once <clears throat> so you can pay four coins to go to the end you remove one fatigue and re recover two health to each crew member um, you can go to the shipyard and uh, repair uh, one damage ship damage per material that you have so that's if you have these you can pay coins or material to repair the ship I hadn't really talked about the ship taking damage but if you take damage from a hazard or from some challenge or something that the ship takes damage you will uh, draw a ability card look at the number on it like for instance this is a five and then that's where you'll put that damage so this is a five here at the quarter so you'll put a damage there if you take multiple amounts of damage um, like two or three damage you'll draw an ability card for each one to see where you're going to place the damage each section can only have two damage except for the hole which can only have one if a section does have two damage you can no longer uh, use that action when you're taking your ship action you have to choose another location so using the shipyard in a port you can repair um, and repair just allows you to remove one damage token from wherever you want on the ship you can go to the healer and pay one coin um, for any crew member that you want to restore all their health so you can do that for as many crew members as you can afford so if you want to pay three coins you can restore all the health for three crew members and finally you can spend uh, experience points to buy level cards so as you explore locations and uh, complete challenges and defeat enemies you'll end up uh, you know, the storybook will say you gain experience and an amount of experience for doing that. Um, you'll write that on your... You'll keep track of your experience here in this journey log. So as you gain experience, you can mark it in here. And as you spend it, you mark it off. But you can spend experience to level up characters. Like this one costs six experiments for Kanan to give him this... Uh, level card and you place it uh, with your you know any equipped card you place it right in underneath it. so you can only have two equipped ability cards um, but your level cards that you get do not count as part of your uh, two equipped cards so if Kanan had these two equipped ability cards and he got this level card he could just slide it up underneath like that and that gives him this ability and another cunning uh, skill and once equipped you cannot discard these like you can these um, you can discard these at any time or you know like he could discard a perception to add uh, one to the damage he's doing in combat you can't discard a level card it remains equipped for the entire campaign so each crew member has different level cards that have a different cost. Um, anyway, you can look through those at any time and see if you want to spend experience on one of your crew members to gain their level, one of their level cards. So that is what you can do in port. Um, so that covers the last of the possible actions. So I'll recap again on a player's turn. They'll <clears throat> do a ship action. Um, then they'll do 
reveal and resolve one event card and then they can take two actions and they can forgo an action to get a command token or forgo both actions to get two command tokens. You can do the same action twice or do two different actions. Once your turn is over, you pass the captain token to the player to your left and then they start over to take their turn. Sometimes as you're exploring and completing challenges and locations, it'll tell you to gain a quest card. Um, so when you do that, or an adventure card, so when you do that, it'll tell you exactly what number to get. If you gain a quest, you get it. You'll read it. It'll have a word down, down here, which is, this will give you a clue to, you know, some kind of quest to where to go. But it'll also have a word down here. Sometimes when you're going in the uh, quest book, or in the storybook, it'll say something like, like here, if keyword freighter turned to 7.1. So if you have a quest card that said freighter down here, any of your quest cards, if they say freighter, um, then you would turn to 7.1. So different ones, you know, we'll say different. This one says if keyword poisoner camp. So if any of the key, if any of the quest cards you have have that word on them, then you turn to the section or do what it says if you have that keyword. At some point you're, you'll complete a quest and when the storybook will say, you know, you've completed a quest one, so you'll get rid of it. You put it in this used quest box. It will not be used again during the campaign. And some things will say you gain adventure card, you know, 46. So then you just come here and grab that and you'll put that with your other adventure cards again unless it's a weapon and then you can equip it to one of your crew members. So your main goal is you're trying to find items that are, that are totems that have this icon on them. The more of those you find, the better your score will be. You can be defeated in a couple of ways. If all the crew members reach zero health, you know, including Captain Odessa, or if your ship ever has 11 damage on it. In other words, all the locations, including the hull, have damage tokens on them. If you checked normal mode at the beginning of the campaign, uh, when you're defeated, you'll mark one defeat in the box. And then depending how you were defeated, either from all your crew reaching zero health or from your ship uh, taking 11 damage, different things will happen. So if all your crew reach zero health, you'll move your ship from wherever it was to the nearest port. You'll remove all damage and fatigue tokens from your crew members. You'll discard six event cards from the top of the event deck and then start a new turn. Um, if the event deck runs out when you're discarding those six cards, uh, you'll put a number of damage tokens in the empty event card slot uh, to remind you how many event cards you still need to discard. So if, if you had to discard six and you discarded three and then it was empty, you'd put three damage in there to remind you that you need to uh, discard three more cards when the event card is, uh, when the event deck is rebuilt. Unless it's the third time you've gone through the event deck and then you don't need to keep track. Because you can go through at the, when the event deck has gone through a third time, then that ends the campaign. Each time the event deck is empty, you'll read a section of the storybook that will tell you something that happens. Um, I don't want to spoil that. But then it will uh, have you end up uh, discarding any equipped ability cards and then you'll end up rebuilding the event deck and as I said you'll so you'll end up going through the event deck uh, three times before the campaign is ended and if you're playing normal mode and you're defeated because the ship uh, took 11 damage you just again move it to the nearest port remove all the damage from the ship and then start a new turn if you were playing in brutal mode um, and you get defeated then that's it. You just have to start over. If you want to play again, you have to start over a brand new campaign from the very beginning. And if you've played a while and you're ready to pause, uh, the manual has instructions on how to 
save the game using your journey log and placing cards and stuff away in a certain way so that you can restart the game from where you left off. I'll leave those <laughs> instructions for you to read in the manual yourself. But that pretty much covers how to play. So we'll do a few example turns. I'm not sure how we're going to do that without doing spoilers, but I'll come up with something. All right, I think I've got everything set back up how it was right after setup. So now we'll go through a couple of example turns. I don't, <laughs> I don't know any way I can do it without there being at least some uh, spoilers. Because I'm gonna have to at least explore one or two locations, um, that kind of thing. So if you don't wanna see any spoilers at all, then don't uh, watch any of the example turns. I'll try to just go through like one round so each player gets one turn and there shouldn't be too many uh, spoilers. We shouldn't explore too many locations, maybe a couple. Um, and you'll see a few, you'll probably see three of the event cards um, and maybe some of the adventure cards or whatever if we find one of those in our exploration. So there will be a little bit of spoiler. So again, if you do not want to see any part of the story whatsoever, then uh, thanks for watching and go ahead on and go enjoy the game. Otherwise, you can watch a couple of the example turns. So let's get started. This player is our first player. So first thing he'll do on his turn is take a ship action. So he takes the ship action marker and uh, we will have him do um, the quarters. So Well, no, he'll go to the deck. <clears throat> All right, so he gets three command tokens. One, two, three. We'll go ahead and have this person spend two of those command tokens now to equip this card. And I don't know, maybe we'll just equip it here to... Uh, now we'll equip it to Gregory. So now he has a perception. He didn't have one before. Oh, this should not be on there. All right. Now we get to take a um, search. So we can draw from one to three of these search tokens. So I'll look at the first one. I can get uh, two grain or two materials. I can uh, search again if I think I'll get something better than that. You know, up to two more times. But if I get any that damage the ship, um, that would not be good. So I think I'll just stop with that one and I'll take the two materials. So I got those here and just add them to the resources on the ship and those are available for any of the uh, players to use. Alright, so that's my ship action. Next I draw an event card. So we got hidden supplies. We already saw this um, when we were doing our how to play. Uh, gain one grain and Raphael loses one health. We'll just put that discarded up there. So we gain a grain. And then we have to put a damage token on Raphael, which is right there. All right, and now this player gets to take two actions. So we'll have them uh, for one of their actions they're going to explore. And they'll explore location two. So we'll turn in our storybook to uh, number two. Again, <laughs> you may want to look away if you don't want a spoiler. All right, sea foam winds through a maze of mossy rocks on the cave floor. They brush the hill of a smiling skeleton which sits reclined against an old iron door. Uh, blood red with rust. You find a skeleton against an iron door on the back of the cave. You can either search the skeleton unavailable at keyword pink. We don't have that keyword. Remember that's on uh, uh, quest cards. So we can search the skeleton um, if we want. Or we can open the door which requires keyword iron which we don't have. I should mention after doing the quick start, um, you will have two quests, uh, Raids on Last Hope and Anne's Cottage. So we do have two keywords, Raid and Cottage, but we do not have uh, Pink or Iron. So we can't do that. 
Um, we can search the skeleton if we want. If we're going to do that, we have to turn to 133. Or we can just leave and return to the ship. So let's search the skeleton and turn to 133. So I've turned to 133. A bag falls slack from the skeleton's fingers. You expect to collect it easily, but a snake with a milk pink mouth hisses out and fastens to your hand. You whip it by the tail against the wet wall of the cave. A snake attacks you as you take the skeleton's bag. Minus one health. Gain four coins and one venom. Gain quest 155. Return to the ship. So minus one health. Because that wasn't a challenge where any crew participated, and normally they would, um, pr crew participating in a challenge would normally have to take uh, the damage. And um, I would say it's kind of vague, the rules are kind of vague on this, but I would say this damage could probably be applied to any crew member. Um, but since this, uh, this player is the active player, I'm going to go ahead and, and apply that to one of. Uh, they're crew members, so I will give it to Gregory Little. We gain four coins, so I'll put those on the ship. And one status of Venom, which causes uh, a player to lose minus one health at the start of each player's turn. Um, so that could be given to any crew member. Um, since I'm the active player, I'm going to give it to one of mine because I made the decision. So I will give it to Laurent. Got a game quest 155, so look in here for that. Oh, it's going to be way at the back. Let me find that and I'll come back. Alright, quest 155. <clears throat> Snake attacked us as we took a bag of pink treasure from the skeleton. Okay, now we have the pink keyword. All right, so we just put that with our other quests. And then it said return to the ship. Um, so that basically ends that action. Um, I think I will have Gregory Little. He has a crew board action for he can spend... Uh, we can spend two command on his board to remove one status. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this poison or uh, venom status from Laurent. So he won't end up taking damage. Alright, and that was uh, my first action. So now for my second action, um, we'll just say we're going to uh, travel. So um, I can... If I wanted to use one of my crew members that has a craft skill and put a fatigue on them to um, use them um, as part of my uh, travel challenge, basically. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to flip the one ability card, look at the fate number at two. So zero to three, I can move one space. So um, I'll move over here. That's one space. And that's that player's two actions, so now we pass the captain token to the left, so now it comes to this player, and it's his turn. Alright, that player has to take a ship action. They can't take the deck action, because you can't have done the same ship action twice in a row. So, <clears throat> we'll have them come, and uh, they will do the sick bay action. So they get one ability card, <clears throat> that goes into their hand, they get four command tokens, so we got those, put them in their play area, and they get to recover one health um, from any crew member, and we'll have them recover one from old Raphael here. I think they'll go ahead and spend a command to equip uh, this card to Mac here. And they could spend two command because this one costs two to equip this one to Kanon or however you say his name. Okay, next this player has to draw an event card. Giant catfish, massive catfish slaps the side of the ship. Catch it, so it's a strength challenge of five. 
Um, if you fail, you take two ship damage. But uh, either way, you gain one meat. So it's a strength challenge. Um, Kanan has one strength. She doesn't have any. But of course, any player can use Captain Sophia Dessa. So I think we'll put a fatigue token on Captain Sophie to use her one strength. And we'll put one on Kanan to use his one strength. So that gets, gives us a total of two. We'll draw our ability card. It has a fate number of six, so that's eight. So that's more than enough. So we don't take two ship damage, and we do gain one meat. So we'll put that on the ship. And now this player gets to take two actions. So for their first action, they'll do a uh, market action. So they get to draw seven cards from the market deck. All right, and then they can look at them and see if there's any they want to purchase. A shield, tincture recipe. I think they'll buy this uh, biscuits and gravy because that will remove four fatigue, one low morale, and recover six health. And it just costs three coins, so they'll take three coins. And they'll take this recipe, and they just add that to their adventure cards. Now they still have four coins, so let's see if they want to buy anything else. Alright, maybe they'll buy this serpent scale vest that does three block. So they'll purchase that. That's going to cost their remaining coins because it's four. The remaining unpurchased market cards just go to the bottom of the market deck. Alright, and for this player's second action, we will visit um, the Zakura trading post. Now that's different than doing the port action. That's a different action. You can explore uh, space 130, which is the Zakura trading post, or location 130. So let's bring up that in the storybook. So here it is, and usually cities or towns that have a um, that are in all caps like that, Usually uh, you're able to visit all of the different choices there um, at least once. You can't visit the same thing more than once, but it depends on what it says. So, it's you know, if, if Keyword Unleashed turned to 222, well, we don't have Keyword Unleashed, so we don't have to worry about that. Trading posts that occur as a collection of weathered wood, tidy shops majestic obsidian hills so we can make one of these choices so let's we don't have any coins so we don't want to visit the tavern um, we don't have anything with pollen we don't have anything with keyword pollen so uh, we don't want to visit that um, we could talk to the dock master so let's do that we got to pay one food so a food is any of these so we'll just pay this grain uh, where's my We'll pay that grain, and then uh, turn to 130.3, which is here. The Dock Master, a luck ran with a maroon skin and twitching eye, warms up to you after Marco shares a bit of soup with him. You ought to shop at the Little Rocky Island to the east. Stop at the Little Rocky Island to the east, the one with the dead trees, he snorts. It'll give you a chance to study some of the more vicious species. He walks away laughing, still holding your soup bowl. The Dock Master warns you about dangerous creatures on the little rocky island to the east. Remove one low morale, we don't have one. Then turn to 130, which is back here. So now we can make another choice. But let's just say, we're gonna, just because I don't want to show anymore, we're going to leave and return to the ship. So that ends this player's uh, second action, so that ends their turn. So we pass the captain, and now we come to the third player. So they have to make, take a ship action. And just to show a different uh, ship action, we'll come over here to the galley, um, where they get to draw two ability cards. Alright, so now they have the maximum they can have in their hand, because you can have a maximum of three. Um, they get three command tokens. So we'll add those here. 
they can discard one of their ability cards to remove move a fatigue from somebody so we're gonna do that we'll say they're gonna discard this uh, ability card and they'll re remove uh, they'll remove a fatigue from Captain Odessa okay and then maybe they want to equip one of these ability cards so they'll spend two command they both cost two command and they'll equip this one to Raphael. And that's a good choice because he already has one strength, so if he's used for a strength challenge, he'll have a total of two. Plus, in a battle, if he discards an equipped strength card, he gets to add a damage um, to his attack. We still have two command that we could use to uh, equip this card if we wanted to, but we might want to save that command well you know what let's just show something different so maybe this player wants to spend a command here on Gloria that lets them draw two ability cards so now they draw two more ability cards All right now they only have one command left so they can't equip any of these but they can keep these and of course they can be discarded um, if during a challenge if they need to to add to something so they'll just keep those in hand all right that's their ship action they're going to move on to their event debris you find some lumber gather it well we got to do a strength challenge so it's a good idea good thing that we added that strength uh, to Raphael so let's use I mean yeah to Raphael so let's uh, use him for the challenge so we'll give him a fatigue and we removed that fatigue from Captain Sophie, so it's probably okay for us to use her again. Remember, any player can use Captain Sophie. Um, so she adds one strength. So that gives us a total of three. Now remember, we could use him if we wanted, and another player could uh, spend a command um, and add a fatigue to use them. But we're not going to need to do that because we've got three so far. We'll draw our card. we got a five. That's eight. So we easily got enough where we don't have to lose a health. Now either way we would gain the material. So we'll take our material, add it, discard our event card, and now this player gets to take their two actions. We'll say for their first action they are going to um, travel, so we're not going to uh, use anybody, we're not going to put a fatigue on anybody to add their craft capability we'll just flip a card we got a three that allows us to move one we'll move here now there's a hazard here so we got to do a um, cunning challenge of five so we'll go ahead and use uh, Marco so we'll put a fatigue on him that'll give us one We'll go ahead and add a second fatigue to Captain Odessa. Now she won't be able to participate in any other challenge as long as she's got two fatigue, but she'll add one cunning. All right, so now we'll flip our card. We got a three, so three and two is five. Um, remember we got two because of the one cunning from Marco and the one cunning from Captain Sophie added to our three fate numbers that's a five which is all we needed so nobody gets a low morale so um, now if we had if we were traveling further we could after we did that we could continue on but we only got enough when we traveled we only got enough where we can move one space so now we're here so we have one action left uh, we'll explore location 30 so we'll get out our storybook Turn to 30, and it's right here. If keyword rotten, we do not have keyword rotten. A sun, uh, sun pierced peak of black rock looms before you, shadow seeps across the sky, filling the air and the breath in your lungs with sickly vapor. Draw fate if one to three gain one madness. Uh, two, all right, so somebody has to gain a madness. Uh, we'll just give it to. Audrey a madness if they participate in a challenge they lose a health all right then we have a choice sail through the shadow of the rock where we have to do a savvy challenge or reverse course and we still have to do a savvy challenge but a little less uh, savvy required 
Well, unfortunately, none of this player, uh, none of this player's crew members have savvy. Captain Odessa could contribute one savvy. That's the anchor there, um, but she's got two fatigue, so she can't participate. We're gonna try to do the reverse course, so we just need a savvy of five. So this player says they're gonna spend they're gonna spend a command to allow their crew to participate because they've got crew with savvy. So they'll spend a command even though they're not an active the active player because they spent a command, their crew can participate. So they're gonna fatigue both of their crew. So they'll put a fatigue on Mac and a second fatigue on Kanan and add their savvy uh, to the challenge. So now we'll uh, flip. We got a two plus two is four. That's not enough, but any player can now discard a card from their hand that has the icon to add to it. So this player can discard this ability card, which has the savvy icon. And now that gives us five, so that's enough to pass. If we'd failed, we would have to gain another madness. But as a reward, uh, we remove one low morale, which we don't have. And then we return to the ship. And that ends that player's second action. So we would pass the token on and now this player would be the first player again so I think that's all I'm going to show I've showed you know a few spoilers by exploring a few of these locations but uh, that should give you a pretty good idea of how the game plays now you know a lot of these players now have this fatigue on them but any one of them could spend a token um, well what have we got a meat and a grain well they don't really have enough to do any of these recipes to discard fatigue. But, you know, maybe Laurent could use his, if he does uh, something to get to man to command tokens, he could spend two on his ability to get a meat. And that would give him two meat and a grain, and then they could do this soup recipe, just which uses any three uh, food and that would allow them to remove three fatigue and a low morale. So anyway, there's different ways to get rid of fatigue and so forth. Um, so again, I think that lets you have a good idea how to play, maybe not a good idea how to play optimally, but at least you should understand how to play the game. I will say um, I had some confusion. The rule book's not clear on exactly to me at least, on exactly who uh, gains, uh, you know, negative effects when a story says, you know, minus three health or, or a status, and so it was a little confusing to me on how that all worked, but I, I think I figured it out for the most part. So I would say the rule book could be a little more streamlined than it is, but it's not bad. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I got this game from my uh, board game Geek Secret Santa. It was on my wish list when I first set it up and started to play. Um, uh, I wasn't really having too much fun with it. I, I was a little disappointed, but as I got further into it, um, I started to have more fun with it and started to like it. Now, I, I never made it off the initial... Uh, map here before I was defeated. I did manage to explore most of the locations, but uh, but finally all my crew ran out of health and I was defeated. Now luckily I was playing on normal mode so I could pick up uh, pretty much where I left off um, just with one defeat. So I guess that will lower my score when I get my total score. I had found a couple of totems. Um, but anyway, I think that's all I want to say about it because I don't want to spoil too much. Um, I'm going to wrap it up here. This video is getting pretty long. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.